This portion of the video is dedicated to Broke Overland. We're gonna get this fridge in here. All right, so we pulled this trim ring. This goes around the isotherm series of fridge and uh, it adds another, well, three quarters of an inch on each side, I wanna say. Yeah, so the flange is three quarter, but then if you go all the way out to the furthest most out point, we're adding about an inch and an eighth on each side. So two and a quarter is what this is adding to the overall width of that refrigerator. So can you fit it through a Euro door? Yes, you can. And we're gonna do it right now. Okay, another thing to note is that it is fitting past the, it is fitting past my door locks as well. So the latch mechanism, I'm actually clearancing that too. Isotherm fridge makes through a Euro door. Hey everybody, Jeff Coe here. And today's cabinet day. Actually, today is about day three of cabinet day. I've been working off and on a little bit for an hour here and there on getting these cabinets installed and I've actually made some progress already. So uh, forgive me for leaving you behind, but here we go with uh, cabinet installs. All right, so these are the cabinets. They're pretty, uh, pretty sweet in my opinion. And these are our brushed aluminum routed out poles. So as you can see, they're a very low profile, maybe about 3 30 seconds of an inch of protrusion on these. And your fingers just kind of hook in here like this. And this one's for the door above, of course, with soft closure. And this is to open up the drawer. So once we get into these drawers, there is a protective film on these right now. And I'm trying to keep that on for um, just protection until the truck is a little closer to completion. But this whole side panel is aluminum. And you know, typically, your typical drawer, you'd have a dovetail joint right here. These have um, screw adjustments on them that allow you to adjust the face frame, um, pitch it, and get it in alignment with the cabinet perfectly and they're all they're actually a little bit lighter than a standard wood drawer so i was really anxious to go ahead and try these i think they're going to be awesome and uh, i hope you guys like them uh, this one is actually the base for my refrigerator so we're going to go ahead and build a um, toe kick underneath it and that will support this box and then the isotherm refrigerator will actually sit right on top of this guy and uh, then there will be finished end panels that will go on either side so we pretty much are going to build this as an assembly and then position it and get it screwed to the wall. All right, so these are the bolts that we use. We've got the threaded screw with a relatively large head on it. And then we've got the female side, which has some um, scallops. I don't know what the technical term is for that. But anyway, it's got some grooves cut in it so that way it won't spin um, when you're tightening it down. So what you do is you drill a hole the size of this guy, put this side through here, and then the screw will come in from the other side these will thread together like so. And then this is what's gonna hold two plies of cabinets together. So these come in many different sizes. 
and uh, the cabinet supplier actually provides these for me every time I buy cabinets. So these ones are for an inch and a half thick, which is two three quarter inch wall cabinets, and this is how we're gonna put them together. I like to put these screws along in series with my shelf bracketry. I think it looks a little bit cleaner. Get those guys started. Come back through and tighten them up. And that's it. So now we've got these cabinets bolted together um, as an assembly. So this whole thing is now together with screws and and those interlocking bolts. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put a skin on this side of the cabinet and that's gonna connect the lower cabinet to the upper cabinet, tie everything together. I think one thing with any kind of mobile kitchen, whether that be in a travel trailer, RV, overlander, or whatever, I think uh, strength is gonna be very important because everything's gonna get jostled around, shaken up, moved around. So I'm trying to interlock everything with these panels to really uh, make it strong and have it bonded together well. So what we're gonna use for that is this guy right here. And this will actually flush up to the top edge here. I'm gonna leave an eighth inch gap on the floor and that gap is gonna allow me to run my new flooring underneath it. And then I'm gonna leave a stick out on this of about seven eighths of an inch so that way when our cabinet is closed, this front edge flushes out to the cabinet face and it looks really nice. I really like it when my filler panels protrude from the uh, cabinet on a frameless build. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now we've got a consistent gap here of 7 eighths of an inch from the face frame to the front edge of our panel and that's going to give us the perfect reveal with our 3 quarter inch face uh, cabinet face with the hinge. The hinge is going to give us a little bit of stick out and that's why we're going with 7 eighths instead of 3 quarters because when we add that stick out we need to add that in this dimension to make sure that this front edge flushes out to our cabinet face. So now we've got these cabinets all affixed, we've got our side panel on. We're gonna go ahead and scoot them over to the bed where they go. The refrigerator will be tied up against the bed. And then I'm gonna trace uh, where the outline of the cabinet is. And I'm actually gonna cut out the starboard behind it. So I've been removing starboard behind the cabinets because this stuff weighs so much. It's around 90 pounds per sheet. It's very heavy and it's actually if I could go back and do it again, I don't know that I would have used the starboard because it expands and contracts a lot more than I thought with uh, hot and cold. And it's also a lot heavier than you would think. Like compared to a sheet of three quarter inch plywood, this stuff weighs, I'd say a time and a half, maybe double what a standard sheet of three quarter inch plywood does. And this is only a half inch thick. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the starboard out behind the cabinets. It'll never be seen anyway. So we're gonna drop I would say close to 80 pounds just by removing the starboard behind these couple of cabinets, which if I do that here, I do it behind my dinette, I do it behind my uh, kitchen sink and everything, it, over time I'm gonna save hundreds of pounds. So by removing each chunk, I think it's really gonna pay off in the end. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pre-wire the back of this fridge. This refrigerator is 12 volt and it is also able to run off of 120 volts. So I've got a pigtail here. This plugs into line and load on the refrigerator and the freezer individually for our 120, 120 volt. And we're gonna go ahead and send this up through our conduit. And then for the 12 volt, what I've done is I have used a Ancor um, wire that's pre-loomed 
this wire is marine grade. I get this from West Marine, and this is a 10 gauge wire, which I did the I did a chart on that to make sure that my amp draw in my refrigerator, which is about 13 amps, and my run, which is about 10 feet, to make sure that this wire was sufficient. So we've got two wires for the refrigerator, two wires for the freezer. So we're gonna go ahead and I used uh, waterproof connectors on these. And then I'm gonna use a small torch, small butane torch, and go ahead and get those sealed up. So once these are shrink wrapped, then we'll go ahead and we'll get our refrigerator freezer combo installed and uh, get it mounted in place for good. All right, so we've got our fridge cabinet installed completely. We've got the doors installed, you can see. We've got our side panel installed. And when you look down the edge, this is flush. So that's what we want to see. It's the interior, which I can move those shelves around. Again, here's our drawers. Everything's soft closure, routed poles. And then our isotherm refrigerator, which is now wired um, into the conduit, ready to go. Here's the interior of the fridge. and the freezer. Moving on to the dinette. So moving forward, this is gonna be where my dinette area is. I've kinda of got a little bit of a jump start on it here. Um, that's gonna be a dinette back. That is gonna be a partial dinette back. Of course, my pass-through is right there as well. I don't know if I'm gonna put a back on there. Um, I may do some form of a door that can open and close, that way you can have a back to that dinette. But for the time being, I'm just gonna build it as if nothing covers the hole, and then I'll figure that out in the future. But what I've got started here is I've got a ledger board up at 24 inches, and then I'll have, um, so both of these dinette seats are gonna be at 24 inches. There's gonna be a small cavity right in front of these two tanks, that's gonna house my hot water heater, okay? And then I've got four 21 gallon tanks. So I've got a total of 84 gallons of water. And this water is gonna be for things like the sink, it's gonna be for the shower, toilet, and it's gonna be for the wash down hose that's outside. So this is not my drinking water, I have a different storage for that, but this is 84 gallons worth under the seats of the dinette. So that's what we're gonna work on building right now. All right, I'm turning in for the day. I got the rear dinette mostly framed out, I guess you would say. I got the front half of the dinette, just the bench done. So as you can see, the front portion dinette is gonna be about 58 inches, almost five feet wide. And then uh, over in that corner will be the toilet. So there'll be a wall over here that this dinette will butt into. And then this one here, this is about 40 inches wide, and it is gonna have a five inch back to it just to give it a little bit of girth. And then, uh, of course, 24 inch seating. I got 16 inches here uh, from the floor to the top of the, or I guess it would be the seat, the bottom of the seat. And then there'll be a roughly a two inch pad, um, upholstered pad there. So that'll bring the seating height to about 18 inches, which Typically 18 to 20 inches is pretty comfortable for a seat like this. We've got all of our tanks fit nicely. We've got plenty of room to plumb them and to do a water fill from outside. I think we're gonna have plenty of room in the middle here to house all of our um, heating units and water pumps, things like that. So I'm really excited about this. And one other thing that I think I'm gonna add, which will make my life easy on multiple levels, is over in the corners of the dinette, like here, um, this front edge right here. All these corners, I think I'm gonna get some brushed aluminum inch and a half by inch and a half angle iron and go ahead and put some corner guards on those. Um, with the cabinet companies, getting finished edges is kind of difficult. So you gotta use a bead mold or a trim mold, which 
to me looks kind of not very good. So I want to use the angle iron here. This is a high traffic area sliding in and out of this dinette. It's going to get beat on constantly. So having the brushed aluminum angle there, I think will be a good add on and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Today is now tomorrow and we are going to try to get the rest of this dinette somewhat wrapped up here. I'd like to get a few things finished up and maybe get some tops cut for these seats, get, uh, get an idea of how this is going to lay out underneath the floor of the dinette, things like that. So let's get going. Got the rear portion of the dinette done. So that was an achievement one. We got to put a hinge back here. And then on this front edge, again, like we've been talking about the brushed aluminum angle pieces that'll run here. And then around the bottom of this cap, we'll do a brushed aluminum flat strap. So that'll be our trim detail. It'll match all of our cabinet poles. And then I decided up top here, I decided to run a starboard um, up here as well, just cause it's waterproof. Uh, a lot of people I'm assuming will be setting drinks here. It's just every flat surface gets something stacked on it. So if I can make it a little tougher by having the starboard on there, I think it's a good call. I'm also doing cushions here and on the back. This is a low back setup. I didn't see the need to do like a full booth high back. I, I kind of like the low back. I rock low backs in my semi trucks and things like that. So I'm a low back guy. So I went with low backs here. And other than that, we're gonna do, hopefully do a starboard table top as well. So that'll match this, kind of pull everything together. And then uh, also you can see my feet are kind of dangling here because I don't have the floor in yet, but right now this is too high. But we've got another eight inches of lift on the floor, which will bring it back into normal dinette seating height, or what I consider be normal around 18 inches when it's finished. So moving on to the next step, which is the front dinette. All right, this is where we're gonna leave it for the rest of the weekend. I got both dinettes installed, both sides of the dinette. This side isn't gonna have a back. I'm still trying to figure out ideas of what to do across the back here. I may leave it alone. I'm not um, super crazy about it having to have a back on it at all. So I might just leave it like that. Um, I've got a side, this side is just sheeted currently because we're gonna have our bathroom again over here, our toilet will go here. So this cabinet is just kind of a stopping point and then the, there will be a full height wall that'll continue here. And then I'm actually thinking about changing directions and tiling this bathroom. So I'll give you guys some pointers on that when the time comes. So this is what I ended up with here. I've got two water tanks, both water tanks installed. I've got a perfect little spot for the Kuma water heater right there, which is just going to be great. And then I will route my coolant lines for the Kuma through the floor. And then they'll also route under the dinette, which the, ho the hoses will come out here and they'll tie into my engine heater. So then I'll be able to make hot water off a of diesel. This is the rear dinette and again this side is just going to have two tanks it'll have a crossover tubing so on the bottom of these tanks they'll all be tied together and then a pipe will run all the way across here back into those two tanks to tie them together and then we'll run a vented line off of the top of these tanks that will run up this wall here so hopefully it works pretty good the other thing that I'm gonna do is right, right down here on the top corner of this tank will be where our fill comes in, more than likely, which I'll probably reverse these tanks and slide them up against this side, the other side here. That way it's a shorter run. And then have a fill spout that'll come through the wall over there and tie directly into the tank. So 
And then of course these panels here will be on piano hinges. And then we're gonna have some custom cushions made like we talked about. So that's the dinette. All right guys, I sure hope you like this uh, video. I know that I had a good time putting all this together for you. And uh, I'm trying really hard to make sure that I keep the content rolling, I'm trying to do one video a week until this thing is done. So unless I have to take the weekend off, we'll be working on it every, every single weekend and I'll try to be getting videos published on uh, Saturdays or Sundays. So you can look forward to another one next week. We're gonna tackle kitchen cabinets and overhead cabinets, which those are a little bit of a surprise. They're a thermofoil cabinet. So they're actually gonna be a white high gloss cabinet. I think you're really gonna like them. They're very modern, um, very fashion forward. They're, they're awesome, they're sweet. So I think you really like those and hopefully you like what we've done today here. So until next time, I'm Jeffco. This is my build.